In the last chapter, we covered airflow, airflow impedance, air pressure, and fan power. We will use them in this chapter to understand basics of airflow distribution in a data center. Let us start with a simple one new server box. The fan in it creates air pressure that leads to airflow through the box. The internal motherboard and other parts act as obstructions for airflow, thus creating airflow impedance. We can represent this server by a simple electrical equivalent circuit with a battery and resistance. The battery represents the fan and the electrical resistance represents the internal airflow impedance. The current through the circuit represents the airflow through the box. When the server is in an open space, the intake and exhaust pressures are the same, represented here as the ground voltages. Now, when the server is placed in a rack, there is additional impedance due to the front door, cable assemblies and other structures such as rear door heat exchangers. The fan in the server has to overcome this additional impedance to deliver adequate airflow required to cool the server. If the additional impedance is high, the small fan may not be able to deliver enough airflow and this can lead to overheating of the server. By extending this model to a data center, we can represent the crack fan and underfloor impedance to study the airflow available at a, at a rack. The server in the rack gets cold air from, from cracks delivered through the underfloor plenum. The fan in the crack also follows the same laws we discussed in the previous chapter. The underfloor plenum offers impedance that restricts airflow. The equivalent circuit as shown includes impedance due to obstructions in the underfloor plenum and perforated tile. The pressure difference between the intake and exhaust of a rack is nearly zero. If the rack consumes 1000 CFM of air and the tile can only offer 800 CFM, then the rest 200 CFM will be drawn from other areas of the room, including the hot aisle. The cold air available at the rack determines the temperature of the server. The underfloor impedance between crack and the rack determines the amount of airflow that is discharged from the floor at the rack. Therefore, the underfloor impedance plays a significant role in airflow availability and rack temperatures at different locations in the data center. Let us study the airflow supplied by a crack at three different racks in a room. The series underfloor impedance add up. So the impedance along the airflow path to the second and third racks get progressively higher. The airflow availability also varies from the first to the third rack due to the difference in impedance. The first rack receives higher airflow than the last one. At the third rack, the warm air from the hot aisle is pulled into the server leading to hot spots. At the first rack, the excess cold air spills into the hot aisle leading to wastage of cold air. To address the hot spot at the third rack requires increasing airflow by say 20% from 1000 CFM to 1200 CFM. This means the crack fan speed needs to be increased. Since the pressure required is the square of airflow, to achieve 20% more airflow, the crack fan pressure output needs to increase by 44%. But all the locations in the data center, not just the third rack, receives 20% higher airflow. That means the first rack is now excessively overcooled, but the third rack is just about in thermal control. The pumping power of the fan equals the product of airflow and fan pressure, and that has increased by 73%. If the operating power of the crack fan was 5 kilowatts, it takes an additional 3.65 kilowatt to bring an extra 200 CFM to the third rack. This is primarily because of the underflow impedance and limitations due to the fan loss. To conclude, controlling airflow distribution in a data center to match heat distribution in the room is the primary source of cooling efficiency. The pattern and level of underflow obstructions 
make it difficult to achieve the right airflow distribution without some active approach such as demand-based cooling. Mm-hmm.